thing after thing, a revival after revival that has been poured out in America and around the world has coincided with what God is doing in Israel, his prophetic timepiece. And so now we are in a season of harvest. We are in a season of revival. It's pouring out everywhere. There's report after report everywhere I look on Facebook, on social media. There's a new revival that's springing up, not only in, in Asbury, but in 21 campuses around you know the United States. There's springing up in Pasadena. I know Brother uh, Pastor Cuthbertson has had an amazing revival in his church, and so it's springing up everywhere and all around. So you have to look at what God is about to do in Israel, his prophetic timepiece. So something is about to happen in Israel, and we were there for such a time as this. And we got to go to Shiloh. Many people think of the tabernacle in Jerusalem, right? That was where the temple of Solomon was. But the first tabernacle, the first temple, if you will, was at Shiloh. That's where Samuel came forth. Hannah dedicated Samuel to the Lord at Shiloh. And the Bible says that the heavens were brass. We anointed every person on our group personally, individually anointed and prophesied to them right about 30 feet from where the Holy of Holies could have been there at Shiloh, literally on the ground. We had words, we had miracles, Miracles. We had healings. We had all kinds of things breaking out. It was a little bit cold, but we had all kinds of things breaking out there in the place where that happened. Now, David, when David would have raised up the tabernacle of David, and if you remember Amos 9-11, so you're, you're thinking, some of you, what does this have to do with me? It has everything to do with you. What God does in his prophetic timepiece has everything to do with you, and it's a sign what he does there of what he's about to do and what he is doing here. Amos 9-11 says, in that day, say that day, this day is that day. In that day, I will raise up the tabernacle of David, which has fallen down. I'll rebuild its ruins. I'll restore it as it used to be, that they may possess the remnant of Eden. It says that the plowman will overtake the reaper, the one treading grapes, those who are sowing. And that is the season that we are living in in the earth, the season of harvest that we are living in in the earth. It was there at Shiloh, but when Shiloh was destroyed by the Philistines, it moved to where? Many people say it moved to Bethel. And at Bethel, we literally built an altar. Everybody took a rock and we built an altar and we poured oil from Shiloh over that altar. And we declared that God is raising up the tabernacle of David again in our day and in our time. <clears throat> Friends, the tabernacle of David was a governing force, the presence of God, the living flame of the Holy One that lived in the midst of his people and the power ushered forth from that place of the priority of the presence and out of that place David took thing after thing conquered people after people and the nation of Israel expanded to the third largest that it ever was in the entire history of Israel out of the place of the presence and we're seeing this in our time that not out of a place of performance not out of a place of competition not out of a place of comparing what, what God is going to do here to what God did at Pastor Cuthbertson or, or in Pastor Dino or any place else. of the presence, God is raising up the presence that would govern Maricopa. God is raising up the presence that would govern the Phoenix area. God is raising up the presence that would govern all of Arizona, that would govern all of this nation. I'm telling you, there is a government above the government of the United States, the government of the UN, the government of the federal government. There is a government that is above every other government, and it's the government of God, and in our day, and in our time, God is raising up the tabernacle of David as a governing force in the earth as the people of his presence arise and take kingdom after kingdom and take place after place. And let me tell you, this is a season to take the land and I want to read you a verse that has to do with Shiloh. And it says, go now to the place in Shiloh where I first made a dwelling for my name. A dwelling for my name. This is Jeremiah 7 and 12. A dwelling for my name. It also says in Joshua 18 and 1, and it says the whole congregation of the children of Israel assembled together at where? At Shiloh, where there was a dwelling for the name of God. What does the Bible say? The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are saved. Together at Shiloh and set up the tabernacle of the congregation there, and the land was subdued before them. 
him. This is a season to take land. This is a season to take territory. This is a season to take cities. This is a season to disciple nations, to disciple our region, to disciple our territory. But it's not going to come out of the place of having a strategy of the intellect, a strategy of the mind, a five-step system, a two-step thing, a formula that we can say, well, A plus B equals C, and this is going to work. That's not going to work. None of it's going to work. Only the presence is going to work. Only the glory is going to work. Only the anointing is going to work because there is an anointing that breaks the yoke. There's a fatness of the anointing that snaps every yoke, that snaps every burden, that breaks every bondage. And it's from the place of Shiloh, the place where the people of God gather together, where there's a dwelling for his name, where the name of the Lord is lifted up, where the name of the Lord is lifted high where there's no other name. No other name. <laughs> and this is going to be a nameless, faceless movement as far as anybody that can say it happened here, it started with me, it started with us. It's going to be a nameless, faithless movement because God says I'm not just going to visit or habitate at one place anymore. Wherever there is a dwelling for my name, wherever my name is honored and lifted up, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming to visit and not just visit but to habitate. That's the tabernacle of David. The tabernacle of David where he employed, he paid thousands of musicians in the temple to do nothing else but to play and to sing before the Lord and to minister before the Lord. He spent, I don't even know how much money it would be in our, in our day, but he employed thousands of musicians. And these weren't just musicians, friends. These were musicians that if you study it historically, Through the school of the prophets with Samuel to be a part of the school of the prophets with prophet Samuel, one of the requirements was to be a master musician. And so when the thing transitioned, and we're in a season of transition from the house of Saul to the house of David, those master musicians that were trained in the school, the prophets with Samuel, went into the tabernacle of David and ministered continually before the Lord. It wasn't a visitation. It wasn't a one-time thing. It was a habitation of the presence of God where they prayed and worshiped and worshiped and prayed and pray and worship. That's why Pastor Francisco and the leadership of this house has had us focused every morning on contending for revival, on ministering to the Lord, on tending the flame, Leviticus 6, that we would be keepers of the flame in our day and in our time. So this is what God is doing. It has everything to do with Israel. It has everything to do with America. It has everything to do with the Lord of the nations because we're in a season where God is harvesting nations, where we're to disciple nations, and the tabernacle of David is being raised up in our day and in our time that contends, not contends for revival, but contends from revival, contends from the place of the presence.